Okay, so I'm going to show you a quick way to do a couple of pages, um, backgrounds. So I have my wet sponge. I have some water over here, natural sponge. I have um, two colors. I have an orange and a yellow that I squeezed out. Uh, if you don't have tube colors, that's okay. You can use the pans, no problem. I like to use this gray. This is, um, I get these at the dollar store, these paper plates, and they're for 25th wedding anniversary. So they're kind of supposed to be silver, but they're really just a little bit pearlized gray. So what I'm going to do with my slightly wet sponge is I'm going to kind of rub into some of these and kind of rub them a little bit on the plate. I want to make sure that the sponge, I'm going to squeeze out water. I don't want it to have too much water. And then I'm just going to decorate my page. So here we go. This is my sponge. I got a little bit of both colors on there. I'm going to go around in like circles or whatever I want to do. And um, I just don't want a white background. Oops, excuse me. I forgot to put my um, paper behind there to keep from getting on the other pages. So that would have been the first step. And we've got this here. So yeah, just to make sure if when I go off the edge. And when I squished the paint in there, I didn't worry about getting it even. I didn't even want it even. Um, and depending on what kind of paper you're working with, it can react differently. So if it's thinner paper, you really want a very dry sponge. Um, this works better on thicker paper, but that's a real good start right there. And then I'm going to do the other side. And maybe a little bit more orange on the other side. I got a smudge of green in there, but I don't care. Oops, I didn't put my paper in here either. All right, don't do what I'm doing. Just do what I say. <laughs> like my mother told me. Okay, so here we go. We got another piece of paper behind here just in case some comes off. And I'm just going to squish around there and um, just get something on the back. Now, when this dries... You know, I can decide to leave it the way it is. I can add some more um, texture with the toothbrush or um, with the sponge. I can also tap with the sponge, get a little tapping texture here. I have a little red um, left out over on the um, my palette over here. So, whoa, that's a lot of red. Maybe I don't want quite that much red. So, let's see what happens. Okay, so we can texturize a little bit at the edge here. And, um, you know, that may be all I do, or it may not. I may come back and do something else. I mean, there, here's some neat swishes. I'm just swishing around. So basically, I can do two pages in about a minute or so. So this isn't something that you have to stress about. Now, I do like to do the two facing pages at the same time because they open up and people see them together and it's kind of nice if the colors, underlying colors are related. I haven't decided what I'm putting on these two pages yet, so this is my first layer. And, um, you know, if the worst possible thing happens and I decide that yellow and orange and, and you know, this little bit of red are not the right colors for this page, I can, um, you know, sponge over it with any color. I mean, even the opposite on the color wheel, which would be blue and purple, and it would come out looking blue and purple with a little bit of this showing through, and that's fine. So then I'm going to squeeze out my brush, I mean my uh, sponge, and I'm going to turn the page. I am going to keep this in here, and I'm going to go to two dry pages that I did yesterday. So this is what I started on yesterday, and... They are now dry. They get a little different look to them when you're sponging, when they're dry rather than when they're wet. This is my um, palette of the dry paints and I just take a little water bottle and I just spray over it like that. And then I can take my sponge and I can pick up the colors that I'm interested in. So I like to check them out first. So I'll take them back on this little palette and kind of, you know, bump it around and see what's going on. And then I usually try at the corner of the page. There we go. It's going to be a little darker. I like the outside edge of my pages a little bit darker. So I sometimes start there. And then we need to put a piece of paper now on this page. If the paper's too small, you can move it around. So I'll start here and do a little bit on the bottom. See, so that sponging is 
getting some texture. A lot of this is going to be covered. Now on some pages where I put a big picture in the middle, I figured that out ahead of time and didn't bother to paint the whole page. But um, these pages, I'm not sure what I'm doing yet. And besides this type of uh, doing background doesn't take uh, very long. So, and I might do down the middle a little bit. Sometimes that leaks through, but I don't worry. So, I'll get a little bit more texture here. So this is gonna be my daffodil page, I think. I can't remember, is it? Yeah. And then this page over here is gonna be my aquamarine page because that's my birthstone. So I should probably get some blue in here too. Oops, making a noise, sorry. So this, this, and I can layer over with as much of this texture as I want and change my mind later. So there's really, you can't really make any mistakes with this. So my, it picked up a little red when I dipped in there and that's okay. That's a, just a little extra color. Some of this is probably gonna have, you know, some other colors on it. What I remember for my aquamarine page is it's gonna be pretty dark, so I might wanna swish some darker colors on here. I've got dark pictures of um, uh, Queen Elizabeth. So the, I was born the, the year she was, um, she became queen and the coronation was in June. And at her coronation, she wore a very famous necklace that was aquamarines. So it was, you know, I was three months old when that happened. And she was wearing my birthstone. So I have a picture of that because I think that's kind of cool. So now both of these sides are kind of related in color because they started out with green. But um, uh, underneath, but th th I went a little bluer with this one and a little bit more yellow with this. A little more yellow in there. So I just dabbed my um, sponge into the wet palette again to get some more texture. And that's great. I think that's fine. So I will put another sheet of paper in between just to keep them from wetting each other. But if you don't, that's okay too because sometimes the color gets from one page to the other and that's a good thing. So this is my maypole and my Celtic tree pages. So I have these little labels on here. Hopefully I'll remember to put them back on which one and I had already started with this so these are what I just did I used um, I wiped with the sponge first and then I did the sponge texture and these streaks I think were done with the toothbrush which I don't know where it is right now so but I'm going to get a little bit of pink that's left over on my um, palette which has a little brown in it oops I better put another so these are my papers that I'm just using to get um, to protect uh, the other pages and so they get decorated too and then at some point I'll use them maybe I'll make envelopes um, out of them um, maybe I'll do ATC cards oh take a look over here don't do this so this is the second uh, the side so my other side of the page has um, my hummingbird on there and I I, so here it is. So I put this uh, gold stuff on the back and um, on on the back of the hummingbird I'll put you know some things about hummingbird, but um, I taped it on there before I painted the other page So what we see over here is now you can see the tape and really what I should have done was paint the page first and then tape it on um, But I'm not really worried. I'll figure out something and the worst possible thing, I could peel the tape off and paint a little underneath. But it may be that I have something covering there. So I'm not going to bother to fix it uh, until I decide later if it needs to be fixed. <laughs> if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So I'm going to go in here with a few more spongings. And basically at this point, I'm just using up whatever leftover paints on my palette. There's a little red in there, but that'll give it a little bit of interest and so those two pages are done so um yeah so you just saw me finish these two pages and then basically do those two pages add some and then 
start these two pages. So that's basically six pages uh, in a short period of time. Now, um, normally I uh, don't do what I just showed you. I don't normally like to get both sides of the page wet. I'm doing that for this video so that it's quicker. But when I do this, usually I'll do an open page spread like this and just let it sit there till it's completely dry, which is usually half an hour or so. Um, if it's raining out, it might take an hour. And then after that, I'll do some more pages. So these are, my pages here are, are kind of labeled about what some of them are gonna be. So I'll go in and, and put the color on the background. This may be enough. You know, I may decide that that's all that's going on this page. And so there we go. So we've got some nice, um, I usually, you know, I do find most of the time analogous color harmony works the best. So analogous would be colors next to each other on the color wheel. So, you know, here we have um, blues and, and um, uh, greens and violet. They're next to each other on the color wheel. And the same thing on this side. And, um, you know, here we've got um, blues and, I'm sorry, greens and, and kind of yellowish browns and greens and yellowish brown mostly. And here we've got green and yellow and green and blue. And then here we've got kind of like the oranges and the reds. So those colors are all next to each other on the color wheel. And, and generally, I like the way they look on the background of a page. But you can look here. This is the sheet of the leftover stuff and it has every color on there and that looks great too. So um, the main thing is just dive right in. Here's another sheet that I did. I did this in about two minutes, the first layer. And then the now I'm starting to use it as a protection sheet so it'll get a bunch of things on it like this and then we'll see what happens so I hope that helps you figure out a good way to add some color to your pages really really quick